Yo, welcome back to another YouTube video and today I'm going to be teaching you how to paint the skin tones of this very, very ripped Chaos Slaughter Priest. Now you can use these techniques on anything you need to paint a lot of skin on. If you're thinking, well hang on, I just need to paint a face, then check out this video up in the top corner where I guide you through exactly how to do that in quite a lot of detail. So you better use that for any kind of face tone. You're only gonna need six colors to do everything that we do in the video today. And the main technique we'll be using is glazing. So if you haven't seen this video and you're unsure of how to glaze, then I'd recommend watching that first because that's gonna guide you through how to use this technique. And we can keep this video just about how to paint the skin. Now we've got all that out the way, why don't you give the video a cheeky thumbs up if you like it and maybe hit the subscribe button and bell notification as well if you haven't yet. Let's get to it. Okay, so here's those six colors you're gonna need to follow along with this. Rhinox Hide, Keter Red Base, Bugman's Glow, Cadian Fleshstone, Sickly Skin, and Nagaroth Knight. And I've put the GW equivalents or closest to on those so you can see where you're uh, gonna use your substitution colors for if you can't get access to those P3 ones. Now we're going on a reasonably thin coat of this all over the minute. As you can see, we're going to need two passes to get full opacity. You saw the mix in the bottom right corner of your screen, just some red and some brown to give us a very nice deep reddish skin tone. We're adding in our Bugman's Glow, and the reason we're doing all of this is because I want this guy to end up reasonably pale, but with a very rich feel to the skin. There's no point in just going on slapping on, say, Bugman's Glow as your base coat several times over the black and giving it a wash when you can get a lot more depth out of something with just a little bit more time. I think it's a good start to move on from here. So the main technique we're using so far is something called volumetric highlighting, which is a very fancy, arty term for paint the bits that are meant to be lighter and just kind of bring a nice roundness to it. Basically, instead of thinking about this in some very difficult way, just basically think back to when you might have drawn something at school, perhaps, and you're just shading the lighter areas. That's all you're really doing with this. Break the miniature down into a series of shapes, normally tubes or spheres. Once you've got that in your head, it's much easier to shade that area in a way that you think it would best catch the light. All you need to do is keep your paint nice and thin and your brush strokes going in the right direction and this will look very natural by the time you've finished. And it's a technique that you can use for literally anything. It doesn't matter if you're painting skin or something like power armor. It really doesn't matter. All you're doing is giving the volumes of the mini, i.e. the shape itself, a bit more definition and light in the areas that would naturally get those. So essentially just keep building those volumetric highlights until you're happy the way things are looking. Try not to make the gaps between the muscles too large. If you do, it's going to look very unnatural and very much like somebody's just sort of outlined everything with a pen. In fact, if you look at the GW um, Katachan Jungle Fighters at the moment, uh, they have that kind of too big a gap between their muscles and it looks really unnatural. We really want to avoid that. We're making our skin tone lighter by adding in some Cadian flesh tone, and we're going to keep going with those volumetric highlights. So here you can see we're making sure that the brightest parts of the mini are further towards the top of it. And this bit of arm is a really good example. We're bringing the brightness on anywhere that's nearest the shoulder, or when we get to the forearm, anything that's on the top side of the forearm. Now, this doesn't mean that you don't want to highlight the bits underneath. Remember, as much as the light source is coming from the sky for this guy, we want to sort of outdoors look to things, you're not going to have that much variation in the skin. It's not like he's being lit from above by a very powerful torch in darkness. So think about how people look when they're outdoors to get the very natural look to things. And as with everything we've done here so far, we're working with very thin paint. It doesn't need to be as thin as a glaze for every single step of this, but by keeping your paint nice and thin, you get very smooth textures on your model. There's nothing that's really jarring as you jump from one color to another. And because we're building up a nice sort of very smooth set of color changes throughout our mix by just adding more paint to the same mix and keeping that going, you shouldn't have any of those issues with the sort of juddering start stop uh, set of paints. So just make sure your mix is nice and thin and very much in a continuous fashion and then just work the volumes as you go. 
Remember, if you're thinking, well, hang on a minute, I don't really know where all of these things are, you can always just stop, take a photograph of your miniature, or if you've done that at the very start, and use that to go back to as a reference. But essentially, just keep it nice and light and loose. The only things you really need to think about are which areas of the skin might be tighter than others. So here you can see I'm highlighting the veining on his forearm and a little extra highlight on the knuckles. If you clench your fist really tight, you'll see your knuckles standing out more so than the rest of the skin around it. And that's essentially just because when you have very taut skin, it shows through, it becomes a little bit more translucent and you see a little bit more about what's going on underneath. For things like your knuckles, veining, elbows, stuff like that, you just wanna make sure they are a little lighter. So think about that really when you're painting your mini. For everything else, it's just what comes naturally, getting those volumes working and so on. Here we're at the stage where we've added in some sickly skin, and this is a really nice way to sort of bring everything to life a little bit. It's gonna really boost the value that we've got here, that's the brightness, and it's gonna give ourselves a very nice pale skin tone. The more of these highlights we put on, the brighter our overall look for skin becomes. And as I said near the start, we want to have a nice pale looking skin tone. We don't want anything that's too dark, but we wanted the richness, which is why we went with that very nice warm reddish brown base coat. I think it adds quite a lot to the miniature. If you guys do, put something in the comments below. If you don't, put it in the comments below. Either way, let me know what you're thinking of this skin tone and whether you try this out yourself as well. On the very brightest highlights that we're putting in here, we make sure we hit all of the areas that are raised above the level of our base skin. So you might want to come back and hit all of those tighter areas like the knuckles, veins, and so on that we talked about earlier on. Don't worry too much if you miss these, but it is a thing that makes everything look much more natural by the time you've put them all in. Okay, so essentially what we're doing here is we're bringing some muscle striations to the foreground. If you are unsure what that is, basically if you take the human body and break it down, you'll find that muscle has nice long strands, like long fibers in it, which create these striations when you've got a very low body fat percentage. It means that your skin that's right over the top of your taut rippling chest muscles, for instance, in this case, not this, no, but in this case, our guy is jacked, and that means that we want him to look jacked. And one of the best ways of doing that is by, by artificially bringing those muscle striations in. All you need to do is take the muscle itself and then draw lines along the surface of it very, very finely with a lighter highlight to give that effect. Now, what you don't wanna do is make this guy look like he's got some weird pinstripe thing going on on his bare skin. But what you do want to do is make these striations look natural. And the key to that is understanding what direction they go in. One of the best things to do for anything like this is to get some reference material. And you could look up pictures of bodybuilders or athletes or someone to find pictures of muscle groups. You could even look up like medical drawings and so on for it. But essentially along the chest, striations go outwards along the shoulder. They'll go down each of the three muscles that make up the shoulder, down the arms and so on. If you've got legs on your miniature that you want to do like this as well, remember there's, there's quite a lot of different muscles that make up your leg. So get some reference material. Nothing's going to look weirder than maybe horizontal striations across a bicep. It will just look like wrinkled skin. So be sure that when you put your muscle striations on, they go in the right direction. If you want this guy to look less ripped and less lean, then just leave them off. You don't have to do them. It's just we want this guy to have a very particularly aggressive look to him. Therefore, we've added them in. Okay, so now that all of you have gone and searched bodybuilders online and all that sort of stuff to see what you need to do next time you paint a miniature like this, we can get back to the task at hand. Speaking of hands, I wanted this guy to look like he'd ritualistically dipped his hands in a bucket of blood. So I took some Nagaroth Knight and some Kador Red, mixed them about 50-50 and thinned them down to a glaze. We then took several thin, very thin coats of paint and applied that to our mini, working directly from the elbow region towards the knuckles. And you can see just how thin that paint was as well. You can see it's almost not showing up on my thumbnail there. When you're working with a glaze, this is kind of what you want. As you do more and more coats, it will have more of a physical effect on the model. What you don't want it to do is go on very opaque very quickly. 
and each glaze that you apply make ever so slightly smaller and it will gradually build the intensity of that color through. Glazing is a fantastic technique and all mini painters really need to start learning this if they haven't already. It allows you to do a lot more to a miniature than you might think. You can add color tints, you can add shadows, you can add extra little bits of highlighting as much as you like. We then took our glaze and added it to any irritated parts of the skin. He's got these bone growths growing through, which we painted first just to be sure that all of that was ready to go. And then we put this glaze into those areas. I also painted on the softer areas of skin that might get more easily irritated, things like your elbows and so on. Again, this is one of those optional things to do, but when you're painting a mini that looks as human as this guy does, it makes very much sense to ensure that you've given it as much of that as you can. So any irritated areas of skin or any areas that would naturally be a little bit more red, why not take two minutes or so to just add a quick glaze, maybe two or three passes of this. Final step, we just took some sickly skin and we put this over those very raised areas again, just where we'd had our red glazes going. We wanted these to still stand out and have that vibrancy, and that was pretty much it. As always, I'm going to leave you with some good-looking B-roll pics of this mini. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment saying why you have or haven't enjoyed it. Don't forget, we stream four days a week, and hopefully we'll see you guys in the streams. Links in the description below. Peace out, everyone.